I'm Jody Collada with Wellspring Solutions. Thanks so much for joining us. We are here at the Center for Holistic Healing in High Point. We are partnering with them and specifically with certified yoga teacher Erica Thomas to bring you yoga demonstration classes as part of our Thrive Initiative. We hope you enjoy this time for refreshment, to relax, and to really just devote some time to your self-care. If you would like more opportunities to thrive, please check us out on our website. Hi there everyone, I'm Erica, and welcome to our Thrive Yoga video series. Today, we are going to be talking about some everyday things you have around the house that you can use for yoga props. So when you're ready, let's get started. Yoga begins and ends with the breath, and that means you don't need to have any special equipment in order to practice. But there might be a few times where having some special props would make you feel better for stability, for comfort, for safety. All of those things are great reasons to bring a yoga prop into your practice. Now, maybe you have seen some of these yoga prop props. Maybe you've seen some of these yoga props before. A yoga blanket, a big bolster, our block or a strap, and of course, the yoga mat itself. Now, all of these things are fantastic, but you don't have to have these official yoga props in order to find that stability, that comfort, that safety with your own home practice. And so let's see if we can find some things around your house that you have right now that you could use instead. So let's start first with your yoga mat as a prop. So ideally, we want a surface for safety when we practice yoga that is very secure. And we like a yoga mat because it's a little bit sticky, but yogis in India don't use yoga mats. They just use the ground that they're standing on. For comfort, you may want something under your feet for safety and stability, you might want to have something that is a little bit more secure. But if you don't have your yoga mat handy or you're using that yoga mat as something else for your practice, then you can think outside the box. One way is to grab a blanket like one of these, a very simple thin blanket that you can fold up or roll up or lay out in one way or another. Beach towels work great. Any beach towel that you have at home can serve as a yoga mat or a yoga prop. We can take our yoga mat and use it as a bolster or a raising the hips or a block as you'll see in a moment. So let's talk about the block next. Maybe you have seen yoga blocks before. This is not a necessary piece of equipment to practice yoga. There's a lot of other things that you can use instead of a block to make your practice a little bit easier, more comfortable, or to help you with alignment. So let's talk about the yoga block. So this is a typical prop that you might see in a yoga studio, but not everybody has a block. First of all, why would you need to use this? You could use it to help get your hand to the floor if we can't quite reach the floor. We can use it to raise the hips or raise the body or support the body in some way. We can use it to help correct alignment, but ideally the block is there to give you enough support so that you can relax into the pose. So that's a lot of what our yoga poses do, is they help us surrender into the pose, relax into the body, so we don't have to work so hard to hold us there. That's one of the great things about using a block. But if you don't have a block, you can use lots of other things instead. 
So one of the things that you can use, if you just need a little bit of support or a little bit of height instead of a block, would be to stack up some books, to connect some books together. So let's say you have a stack of books here and um, we just need about four inches off the floor. So this is just four books, but you could go higher. You could take the big old dictionary book or something like that, something really thick, maybe your medical manual or something that's laying around, the family medical journal. Uh, those are big, thick, strong books. They work fantastic for yoga because sometimes you just need a little bit more height a little bit more space to support you, your body or to reach the floor. So don't hesitate to grab something like this. If you have a big stack with multiple books, definitely recommend wrapping them in something. One of the things that we have on hand in a, a practice typically is some kind of strap, which we're gonna talk about next. So this would be a yoga strap. You could tie that strap around your books and now you have a block. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use something like a TheraBand, which I know, unfortunately, a lot of people have in their house because of other types of injuries going on. But all we do is wrap that band around the, the books. You can tie it off, and now you have a nice secure uh, block instead of a yoga block. If you don't need that much height for a block, you could simply fold up your blanket or your towel right? So here with this towel folded as it is, we have about two inches, but you might want to fold it again and you can get up to, I don't know, six, four to six inches where you've got a nice tall height for that block and it's a little bit softer. This works great if you are looking to raise your hips off the mat. So let's talk about the yoga strap. We use the yoga strap to help reach to the ends of the body. So that might be taking your hands to your feet or reaching your hands to your other hand or just finding some kind of dynamic connection, dynamic tension in the body. But again, this is a yoga specific strap. They do come in all different lengths. But if you don't have one and you feel like this might be something that could really assist you for some of your stretches, especially reaching your toes or for some of our deeper hip openers, then instead of using a strap, we can take other things that we have around the house. I personally like to use a hand towel instead. So just your basic hand towel that you have in your bathroom works great for most of our yoga poses that would call for a strap. It's usually long enough. If you find that it, it's still too short, possibly a men's tie, or we can go back to that TheraBand, that stretchy TheraBand works great. A jump rope, a jump rope, works fantastic as well. And if you really are in a pinch, you can snag one of these straps off of a duffel bag. This is fantastic because when you're traveling, a lot of times we travel with duffel bags, right? We don't always travel with our yoga strap, but it's extendable. And if you have multiple ones, you can connect them at the end. It always works great in a pinch. So those are a few of our outside the box yoga props. And our last but not least yoga prop is the bolster. So this is a little bit of an investment for folks. I don't know many home practitioners that keep one of these around, but they are fantastic for some of our restorative poses where you can just prop your body into a pose and then just melt into the body, melt into the breath. You have things like this around your house, the pillows off of your bed, some of the bolsters off of the couch. 
if you are um, if you already have your yoga mat then this works fantastic as a bolster as well because we can roll it up and now we just have a skinny version of our big puffy pillow bolster so the mat itself can become a bolster we can roll blankets up to turn them into a bolster of any length here or long ways if we were to unroll this and roll it the other way now we get a longer uh, a longer bolster and if the blanket is very thick we could easily recreate a pillow bolster for ourselves. So now that we have seen how to think outside the box with some of our yoga props, let's take a look at how you might be able to use these in your own practice. So when we're using a chair for a prop, we of course have the back of the chair, we have the seat of the chair, we could be seated in the chair for whatever pose that we're going to be doing. But I like the seat of the chair for any of our forward folds because it helps to train neutral spine and it's very protective. Many, many poses in yoga, standing poses in particular, require a neutral spine, which is difficult to get if we have been practicing rounded shoulder posture. So let me show you the hip hinge first, where we set the hips going back Abdominals are drawn in, and as we hinge forward, we can walk our hands down the legs and then take them to the seat of the chair. And by allowing the body to rest into those hands, we can look up and flatten out the spine here, reach back through the tailbone for a beautifully protected spine, supported in a way that allows the muscles up and down the backs of the legs to truly lengthen and relax. And whenever the body relaxes, then of course we can breathe and sink into those poses. Both our blocks and our bolsters, or your equivalent of either one, are fantastic to help lift and align the spine in any position, and that includes when we're seated on the floor. So what we can do is take our mat and roll it up, and now we have our bolster equivalent. And by placing that on the floor, we can sit up on top of that bolster, raising the hips, just a little bit because of course it's going to squish down a little so you're going to feel your sit bones down into the mat and then we can extend up through the crown of the head and this is going to help keep that neutral spine throughout this seated position whether we've got our legs extended or whether we bring the feet in for butterfly or extend them out into a straddle, any of our seated postures with the hips raised, especially hip opening postures with one knee in or bringing the knee across here are all improved by raising the hips even just two inches away from the mat. Without that raise, sometimes the low back will round over because many, many people have this shortened length through their hamstrings, the back of the legs, and this makes it very uncomfortable to sit this way, actually, <laughs> kind of hard to breathe. So all we need to do is slide that little mat in, come up, and now all of a sudden we are lifted and relaxed. So the same position here with our hips raised we can use our hand towel to then extend the back of the body a little bit more. A seated forward fold is an excellent opportunity to show how that neutral spine and using your hand towel in place of the yoga strap can really help extend the pose. So I'm gonna just twist my towel a little bit and bring my hands to the very ends 
of the towel and then toss it around the bottom of the feet. So a lot of people complain about not being able to touch their toes. This is an excellent way to take that out of the equation. And so with the towel wrapped around the bottom of the feet, we can kind of walk the hips back, extend up through the head instead of down to the knees, and then simply gently pull the ends of that towel as we hinge forward. And we're reaching forward through the heart, always leading with the heart in poses like this. So we were looking for that beautiful stretch sensation through the back of the legs. And we can connect with that breath and let the body sink into the support. So we have that support under the hips. We have that support with our towel and there's no need to force ourselves deeper into the pose. So there's a very popular hip opening pose in yoga. It's called pigeon and it's a fantastic stretch for the hip, but a lot of times it feels better when we have extra support. It's one of those poses that has a lot of body weight behind joints that sometimes aren't very happy with us, like the knees and the hips. And so I wanna show you how you would use one of our homemade props to help you support yourself in a pose like pigeon. So I'm going to come into pigeon by sliding my left knee behind my left wrist and taking that lower leg just a little bit across the center line in the body. And what, what you'll notice here is that I have a lot of space between my hip and the floor. Now, if you look at any pictures in a yoga magazine, you won't see this space, but this is real life here. We're doing real life. And so what that means is that um, if I wanna relax into the pose, I need to take some of this body weight that's coming in behind these joints off so that I can surrender, so that I can breathe a little bit easier. And as always, we don't want to move into any kind of pain or strain. And so I'm gonna take my homemade block, my, my stack of books, and I'm gonna slide it up underneath that hip a little bit so that I'm actually sitting on that. Now, if it's not quite high enough, maybe we wrap this in one of our beach towels or we fold up a blanket. If the books are too hard, if that's uncomfortable, anything that makes you really uncomfortable adds tension in the body and we're trying to relieve some of that tension. That's all our props are doing, relieving tension. So I can take those books up underneath my hip and then I can relax the body down and support all the way down on my hands rather than coming all the way to the mat. That's just one of many ways to use your homemade block and you may even be able to see a few more in some later videos. This has been just a small taste of some of the things that you can do with props that are around your house to enhance your, I wanna do that again. This is just, this has been just a small taste of some of the things that you can do with props, with things that you have around your own house. All of them to enhance your own personal practice. Throughout our Thrive Yoga series, you'll see more ways to use blocks, straps, bolsters, and blankets. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much again for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed these yoga exercises and that you devoted some time to your self-care. This class is part of a series, so please check back on our website for more opportunities for yoga and to thrive. Thanks so much again for joining us and thank you to the Center for Holistic Healing.